Good morning, everybody. Today is Saturday, August 26th. I'm Hurricane Howe with your tropical weather update. A lot going on in the tropics. Can't wait to share with you a lot of activity this morning. And here's what it looks like on the big screen. The National Hurricane Center showing two tropical waves in the eastern Atlantic. We have Tropical Storm Franklin still trugging along. It's endured a lot already. And we have an area here in the Gulf of Mexico and Western Caribbean with a 90% chance of tropical development. That's an area of interest that we'll talk about today on the broadcast. Well, let's start here with Tropical Storm Franklin. It's held on crossing Hispaniola. It's still a tropical storm and strengthening a little bit. Maximum sustained winds now 65 miles an hour, moving to the east-northeast at 6. And it's about to make this turn to the north and then the northwest. And conditions will be really favorable. The wind shear is going to get lighter. It's going to be in a moist environment. And look at this as it passes west of Bermuda. It's forecast not only to become a hurricane, but a major hurricane, at least a Category 3, and then eventually kind of curve around Bermuda and eventually move off to the northeast. So really interesting. It looks like it will be in a good environment for intensification, becoming a hurricane and forecast to become a major hurricane as it passes west of Bermuda. This is the likeliness of tropical storm force winds with Franklin. So you can see there now Bermuda now has um, tropical storm force winds are now probable in Bermuda. And look at this over to the U.S. Now the likeliness of tropical storm force winds has dropped below 5% for coastal North Carolina, as well as all the way up to the mid-Atlantic coast and New England. At one point, we were looking at maybe a 5 to 10 or slightly higher than 10% chance of tropical storm force winds in the U.S., but it looks like it's going to stay east now, not directly impacting the U.S., but keep in mind, a major hurricane passing west of Bermuda, that's going to have a large wind field, and it's going to push a lot of waves towards the coast of the U.S., the Carolinas, all the way up through the mid-Atlantic states and New England. We could expect large waves and, and coastal erosion as well, rip currents, rip tides, all those things. So there will be some coastal impacts as far as large waves and erosion, even in the U.S. This is Tropical Storm Franklin, which is forecast to become a hurricane and a major hurricane as it tracks between the U.S. and Bermuda. Well, let's go back to this map here and let's talk about this area here in the Northwest Caribbean that now has a 90% chance of tropical development. And let's look at the Euro model. So look at the time here, the Euro model. This is really Sunday night, really Monday morning after, after midnight. And it looks like it's trying to get together a tropical depression or maybe even a weak tropical storm there in the Northwestern Caribbean, not far from the Yucatan Peninsula. The Euro develops this into probably a, a moderate to maybe even a strong tropical storm. Look at this difference here in time. This is from 2 a.m. on Monday to 8 a.m. on Wednesday. So that's a 54-hour time difference bringing um, maybe a moderate to strong tropical storm there uh, to the west coast of Florida. This is a GFS model or the American model. The same idea. Look at the Genesis point. Pretty similar there. Northwest Caribbean off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. But this timing is a little bit different. This is Monday at 8 p.m. So a bit, little bit later timing there on the GFS. And then look at this. Bringing it into the Florida Panhandle. At 985 millibars, um, that potentially could be a Category 1 hurricane. The timing of that is Wednesday at 2 p.m., also 54 hours really there from the Yucatan to a potential landfall in the U.S. So, again, looking at this with all these isobars, with this development, with that pressure, you may say, wow, that could be a Cat 1 hurricane hitting the Florida Panhandle on Wednesday. Uh, keep in mind a couple huge caveats here. Uh, for one, we do not even yet have a center of circulation. Until we have that, we can expect a, a wide shifts in the model guidance of where this forms, where it tracks, the timing, and the intensity. Until you have a storm formed, there's a lot of uncertainty, so we could ex expect uh, th these forecasts to shift around quite a bit over the next, I would say, 24 to 48 hours. But keep in mind, too, this is what we call a deterministic forecast. It's just plotting some time out there in the future. It's saying this is what the world may look like on Wednesday at 2 p.m., and it's putting a storm out there. It can look authoritative. You see all these isobars or lines of equal pressure. It can look like, wow, this is what's going to happen. But it's interesting also to look at the ensemble. So with an ensemble, you're tweaking the initial conditions. And you're saying, well, what if it doesn't form exactly on the Yucatan Peninsula? What if we shift the center of uh, development 20 miles to the east or 20 miles to the north or change the timing? So you're shifting 
shifting around these initial conditions. And look at this. This is the American model, the GFS Ensemble. And when we tweak those initial conditions, we start to see really a different story. I mean, look at these. These are wind speeds in knots. Blue are between 30 and 40 knots. Green, 40 to 50 knots. You need 64 knots to get a hurricane, which would be into the orange there. And you look at most of these ensemble members, you see a lot of blues and greens, which would indicate generally a weaker to moderate tropical storm. And look at the black line, which is the ensemble mean. That black line is actually tracking farther east than the, than the deterministic GFS or American model and, and bringing it over there, maybe closer to Apalachee Bay or some area possibly near Apalachicola or east, generally north of Tampa. Again, when we look at these maps, we want to think in general terms. Don't look at a specific thing. We don't even have a storm formed yet or named yet, let alone uh, anything on the map. So we want to th look at this in general terms. But in general, the GFS or the American ensembles generally showing possibly a, a moderate tropical storm heading somewhere towards the coast of western or northern Florida. And, and the timing on this would, again, get it into probably Wednesday with the impacts on the coast. This is the Euro Ensemble, the same idea. We're tweaking the initial conditions and, and, and we're getting a range of solutions. And this is a really nice model. Again, be careful if you just see a deterministic. If someone's sharing on social media just a snapshot of, of this is where the storm will be four days from now, uh, definitely take that with a grain of salt, especially if the storm hasn't even formed. The same concept really here with the Euro ensembles. We see a lot of blues. We see a lot of greens with that, generally meaning I would say, I would think maybe a, a weaker to moderate tropical storm, generally moving to the direction, uh, you know, somewhere possibly between Panama City and Tampa for a center of circulation. Keep in mind as well, if a center of circulation comes in here by Apalachee Bay or over by, say, Cedar Key or or Clearwater, Florida, that can actually produce a lot of flood risk over here in Tampa. So keep in mind the, the circulation here counterclockwise, that would be an onshore flow there for Metro Tampa. We could get a lot of banding of heavy rains. And also we would expect storm surge here on the coast of West Florida. Maybe not the hugest storm surge, maybe on a tropical storm like this, perhaps, I don't know, two or three feet of storm surge in Tampa, but that produces something th called compound flooding, where if we had a couple feet of storm surge in Tampa and we're getting seven or eight inches of rain in some of these bandings, we could see some flooding in areas like Bayshore Boulevard of Tampa getting into Wednesday. Again, things very speculative right now. We're just looking at a range of solutions, but it's interesting to look at the ensembles. In, fa in fact, let's close out with that. Again, this is the Euro Ensemble. This is the GFS or the American Ensemble. And you can see that they look pr pretty similar as far as their, their points of genesis. Look at their tracks, both taking a storm up towards Apalachee Bay. And also look at the colors. We see a lot of blues and greens, which generally mean maybe a, maybe a weaker to moderate tropical storm. But again, that could change when we see where this actually forms. It's not out of the question that we potentially, as an outlier, could see a hurricane impact anywhere from the Florida Panhandle to areas near or north of Tampa. Again, it's early to say this is just indication indicating the big picture. We do think that there'll be a storm out there this next week. There's a 90% chance of tropical development. It looks like the impacts would be in the eastern Gulf, but it's a little too early to give specifics of timing and intensity at this point. Just something we're going to have to watch as we go through time. Y'all, thanks for tuning in on the broadcast. If you have any questions or comments about this, leave comments on the post. I'll be back here on Monday morning, probably. I'm uh, doing a day trip to see my kiddos tomorrow, but I'll be back on the broadcast most likely Monday morning, potentially going over to Florida if this does form into Tropical Storm or Hurricane Adelia. I'd like to give you coverage from the ground. Everyone have a great weekend. This is Hurricane Hal signing off with your Tropical Weather Update.